Yeah. Yeah. The floor is all Phoenix's. It's all mine. <laughs> um, my name is Phoenix. I, uh, I'm homeless. <coughs> well, I was homeless and mentally ill, and I am part of the downtown Eastside community in Vancouver. And what I came here to say was to talk about how the downtown east side is a community of low-income people who have a strong voice and a grassroots movement. And a lot of the principles that we talk about, lived experience principles, are set out there. And one of the things I wanted to talk about <coughs> is uh, the Carnegie Community Center in the downtown east side of Maine and Hastings. It's run by the city, but there's also a strong board that I'm a part of that are the patrons. There's 5,000 people that use a community center um, and are members of the community center. And in the community center, our board is, uh, we don't ask people if they're homeless or have mental health issues, but they're welcome to be on the board if they're a patron of the center. And what that means is that <coughs> the center actually um, has committees that, like, um, we have a community relations committee. And so the center's executive director, which is a city staff, actually comes and chairs, uh, no, she doesn't chair the meeting. She takes the notes for it. And the chair is one of the people from the community. And the people will come with different issues around the community. For one time, it was people from people of African descent that wanted to get involved in the, in the center and have more um, dealing with people from the, the African community came in. And sorry, I'm really nervous. And good. Um, good. <laughs> there is also. When there's hiring at the center, there's always one of us that's on the hiring committee and has a voice in who gets hired to work at the center. <coughs> and our executive director is actually leaving us in January. And so human resources from the city of Vancouver is actually consulting um, people from our page, like us from the center on what we want to see and also some of the activists asking what we want in the, in the uh, job description of the... Uh, Cool. what we want on the job description of the new executive director. And she, one of the policies at the center is that the staff has an open door policy. So if somebody, one of the patrons that come there from the downtown east side, if they want to have, they have an issue with security or they have an issue with somebody, they can go directly to our assistant executive director, which is city staff. And if we have issues, we can talk to the executive director directly it's it's a back and forth and they will consult with us and ask what do you think about the the people selling um, pills and everything else on the corner and we sort of have the feeling well um, it, it, it turns some people away but it's also if we push it out where else is it going to go and people know where they can get their dealers they know where there's people that know them and so they come to that and there's a community there and there's a lot of negativity about the downtown east side but there is a strong community and part of the mission statement of the Carnegie Center is to serve the low-income community <coughs> and it said right in the mission statement so there's always that low-income voice and one thing that our board did many years ago um, we wanted to set up an advocacy group and so the board at the community center actually set up the Carnegie Community Action Project that does work on um, raising welfare rates Build, trying to get social housing built, slowing down gentrification, and um, also there's a mental health study that they're doing right now, and that's something that the board fundraises for. We get grants from different organizations to run the Carnegie Community Action Project, and the focus of it is like people that are part of the action project are um, homeless or they live in the single room occupancy SROs or um, They've lived in the downtown east side, so it's mostly downtown east side residents that are involved and have a voice. And one of the things I found in trying to include people with lived experience is that they often don't have a voice, and especially on some of the city committees, you may have one lived experience person, and one of my friends, Karen, 
was the only one who had mental health issues and addictions on one city task force and she said she told them I want more people there and she pushed for us to get involved as well so that she wasn't the only person dealing with a room full of suits um, that made a difference to have a critical mass and have mm -hmm. us support each other and understand each other